Hello and welcome to Dude Let's Talk, hosted by Evan Stone, Omar Johnson, and Spencer Goolsby, where we explore the depths of the male experience, celebrate stories of resilience and personal growth, and challenge people to embrace change in rewriting their stories. Let's get started. Now let me explain something to you guys, man. Welcome to Dude Let's Talk. What's going on, fellas? What's up, fellas? How you doing? Doing good, man. Right. Another long week. How about you guys? Yeah. I mean, long week, but a good weekend. Yeah, we we uh, hung out. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, you and I hung out. Yeah, it was structured, structured fun. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went, I went to a get together the other day, uh, and once again, man, show up, introduce myself to new people, and first thing someone asks, "What's your name? What do you do for work?" <laughs> the, the customary <laughs> question. <laughs> I said, well, why is that? Like, that's not my identity. It's tied to a career. Yeah, what so, about you? You experienced that with people lately? Oh, dude! Like, okay, first of all, like summarily, every time, yeah. What's your name? So, like, what's your personal identity? Mm -hmm. And then what do you do? What's your professional identity? Right. And I always, like, I ask myself the question, like, why are those the questions that are, I mean, the name part, the personal name, I get it. Yeah. But I, like, I do want to know your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, what, like, what do you consider yourself? Like, like oh, I'm Evan. Okay, cool. That's what yeah. I'm going to call you. Yeah. But the second part, like, what do you do? Like, why is that, why is that the first question? Why are we as societally tied to that so much? I, I don't know. It's it's almost like they're gauging your status in life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they want to say, "Are you Evan the plumber? Are you Evan the electrician? Are you right. Evan the doctor?" Yeah. Could it you could know it maybe be tied to like intelligence? Why people ask these these different questions? Like if I mean, yeah, possibly because someone said, "Hey, I'm Evan. I'm a therapist." I'm be like, "I'm gonna keep my mouth shut." Right. <laughs> this dude's about to pick my brain. You know? Wow. Yeah. Right. He's but, just gonna annihilate oh, me when man, I start yeah, talking. Yeah. Right. yeah. I'm gonna go hide in the other room during this party. But, right. My thought would be yeah. like, uh, "Hey, what's your name? What do you do?" Like, and then my back of my head, I'm like, "I just want to know secretly how you can afford all this." Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Why do you have Ferraris? Out there? Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it, it, it's a good question. Like, I don't, I, I never really understood. And, and, and funny, it, this runs parallel with, you know, like, this is like a St. Louisism mm -hmm. where, you know, people ask, like, hey, what's your name? Wh what school did you go to? Because they're trying to, like, gauge the area that you live mm -hmm. in. Again, I think it's kind of like a status. Your cultural you know? norms. Right. Yeah. Well, you made it to Castle Rock, my friend. So now All right. Yeah. Just, you good. <laughs> you good. Right. But yeah, everyone tries to tie our identity to our career, it seems like lately. Right. right. That's not the true value of life, and I mean, as right now, what you're going through, how do you feel about that? Do you do you oh. feel like you've uh, kind of experienced some some life changes and oh man, new visions and outlooks, or what? Yeah, so I mean, we could we could talk a whole episode, which I think we may in, intend mm -hmm. to do. So, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's an interesting juxtaposition about like you know when we talk about identity, like what do you do and mm -hmm. what a job means to a man, and I'm going through that transition now, and I, and I mean, we talk a lot about we're walking this road as we're building it, but you know, I'm going through a transition in my job and it was due to a job loss. Mm. And I had worked my career, been classically trained for my, my family. Like you work as hard as you can, you get status, you make money. And I thought I had achieved that, had a good title, made a lot of money mm. and, uh, got it all ripped away from me. Mm. And I find myself or found myself like almost virtually losing myself. And then asking myself the question, why do I feel this way? Yeah, that's deep. Is your, is your identity feel gone, stripped away, or? No, I mean, <clears throat> again, like this. These last six weeks have been pretty eye opening, especially like talking to y'all and getting on the podcast. And right. Yeah. I think consciously, kind of, you know, the road kind of you can choose to continue to go on this road, or like you kind of like, you know, right. oh, I got to do something different. <laughs> yeah, here. Right. But I think I really chose in this particular instance to like really dig deep and figure out like the why behind why my identity had been so tied to my job. Mm. And so there's a lot to talk about. I mean, I didn't recognize the same concepts that we talk about with relationships, with growing up as a 19 year old mm -hmm. with envy and jealousy, right. or like thoughts of rejection and shame right? and a failure in the eyes of these societal norms and constructs that we both help construct mm -hmm. and then also live by. And so I mean, society tells us as men, we have to be providers, right? right? And that's kind of been instilled in us since we were young men. I mean, that's all I've ever known is to provide for my family right. and my wife and be there and be that strong, supportive person. But is that right? Is that the right, I mean, is that the right answer? 
talking about it when it's out of your control when someone can take that from you it doesn't seem healthy yeah you know definitely when it's out of your control if you've done everything you possibly can do and then someone can just take that from you because you know the company's financially not doing well and they're just trying to cut staff or whatever it may be but at the end of the day um you know got to go back to your values of life mm. so that's a really good point so you have to go back to your values of life or whatever values that you have established personally mm -hmm. a what are those and b what if you haven't gone through the exercise of doing so it's going to be a tough practice <laughs> yeah it's <good. laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah really tough practice i i i don't know i don't know why and and I tend, I honestly, I tend to sometimes blame corporations for that because they, they embellish the titles on mm. different roles because they understand that people will go after said titles because it has mm. VP of marketing, C, CFO, True. CEO, all of these status, all, 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 sorry, all of these titles are unfortunately a status symbol. Yeah. They just want that label. Right. They want the label, but it, it's, it's like. Why, why do we chase, yeah, why do we chase a label? Why do we attach ourselves so tightly to our, our, our job? And, and I mean, literally just, uh, it's like the world crumbles. Like no one wants to lose a job. Everyone, you know, mm -hmm. like you say, every, our role in society is, is to be providers. But I think, I think as a whole, as a parent, mm -hmm. you just want to be a provider to your children, mm -hmm. you know, why is it that we, why is it that we are as men, um, put in the position of head of, well, I'm not, not all the time, but you know, as far as society standards put in head of household and we have to carry the burden of making sure that we make enough money for mm -hmm. not only yourself, uh, for, you know, your wife, kids, so on and so forth. You want to, you want to provide all these things like go on vacations and, you know, mm -hmm. provide I, your kids with you know, experiences yeah. as they grow up. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, I think, I think you're right. But I think you're, I think you may be discussing a symptom of a bigger, in my opinion, a bigger thing, which is all of these things: making money, feeling seen and heard by your family, mm -hmm. um, you know, being able to walk in and feel like you're. It's, it's this sense of belonging yeah. to a family, mm -hmm. to an entity, which we can talk about. Like, why do men love sports so much? It allows, it allows them to watch this unified pursuit right. of a goal and it really kind of tugs in the heartstrings of these very primordial masculine traits mm -hmm. that I think a lot of us don't know that we want to exude, yeah. but really deep down inside want to. And I think what you're talking about, I agree with it, but I think it harkens back to a very a much deeper rooted idea, which is the idea of belonging and socialization. True. Right. But I, I can also, you can also say that you can also say that the status of your job correlates with all of those those perceived expectations mm -hmm. that you're going to have. Like yeah. having the CFO title yeah. would mean that I can provide for my wife, kids, take vacations, mm -hmm. give them experiences and things of that nature. So, yeah. in in turn, we we tend to seek those 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 status symbols. Yeah. See, but I see now. Okay, so now I see where you're coming from, but I think it may be coming from a place that you may have already experienced. And yeah. overcome absolutely yeah what i am currently going mm, through right and so let me try to paraphrase what you know what i think you were saying yeah yeah and that is like there's one thing to like working making you who you are mm. which is what i had i i had tied my identity to being you know the vp mm. at a company so much so that i forgot that maybe i should just find something that provides the means Mm -hmm. for me to to be able to spend more time with my family like you know the example that i that i read about was right. a ceo didn't care about what his title was more more concerned that his job provided him the opportunity to a wake up in the morning and go surfing but more importantly be able to, to travel globally to go on these surfing trips with his son so he had made that transition that you're describing right i think that's where you're coming from i and i'm still in this process of th learning how to process it basically yeah i'm actually trying to reinvent my identity yeah which is which is a very healthy well, thing. Don't well, think that's unhealthy. It is a very healthy yeah, thing to do. Opportunity that. for growth. And once right. again, go back yeah. to the values of life. Right? right. Once again, we're talking about being providers and stuff for our wife and kids. Yeah. But at the end of the day, dude, I just want to be a role model for my children. Right. Yeah. I don't think that has anything to do with the career choice I make and, or it, how much money I bring in. Yeah, right. I think that's true. And and like the other thing too, like Nicole and I were having the conversation the other day, like, like what if part of my role in some season of life 
is to find a job, maybe even like more local, because I travel a lot for a living, mm-hmm. to find something more local that provides more structure so that she's able to go pursue her leadership, her mm-hmm. leadership aspirations. Right. In that regard, I'm still a provider, but not in this customary way right. that I have identified with myself, you know, for the past 20 years. Or yeah. Right. yeah. Right. So that's, so those are the divergent roads that like mm-hmm. currently right now I'm like really yeah, and- fighting. You know, we go to church too, and we, like I told you yeah. earlier, I seen the text, and they're like, "Hey, text to serve, right? If you can be a part of this." And it's like, you know, maybe there's there's definitely more out there than just making money, providing for your community, and being a friend, and listening, and helping others is is really important values of life. That and at what point does your does your position or title at work come into play there? Nowhere, <laughs> nowhere. You know, like we talked about in our walk this morning, like all of us. We we've met each other randomly. We've never been like, "Hey, dude, what do you what do you oh, do yeah. for work?" Right. We, we've <laughs> we, never done that. We're we, just like, "What's up?" No, bro? Like, we have never done that. We've have never we? done that. Yeah. yeah. So, isn't there something to be said about? I mean, I'm getting goosebumps because yeah, I think along with this journey, we are figuring out to define our values very much. You know, divergent from that mm. that, that of which we do for a living, and that like epiphany we had this morning. Maybe it's the energy that we provide. Um, that we're not about the work. We're more about right. real life situations right. and, and helping others. That's why we're on a podcast right, right now. Yeah. Doing it's, this stuff, but providing for our families is just right. That has to happen. I yeah, think absolutely. it's important. I think it's important as men that we, you know, we, we try to find the commonalities. Like, like when I, when Evan and I first start hanging out, I, mm. I, and, and to this day, I, I did not care what he did for work. I yeah. still you didn't know, know what he did until like <laughs> right. three days ago. And yeah. it was it was not something that was a subject of t- or a topic of subject for me. Like mm-hmm. I need to find out what that wasn't important. No. no, I just like like dude, what do you like to do? You know, we yeah. start talking about hobbies like yeah. flying drones, cars, yeah. and stuff like that before we even talked about before he even found out that I was mm-hmm. you know an iron worker or not, and I found out that you know he he did marketing for his his company. Yeah. That was more important to me to find out who he yeah. was. Who was this weird dude waiting right. down in the street? That's actually <laughs> you really had to figure out who your yeah, neighbors like, yeah, were. Yeah, 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 I like your car. Yeah. Come over. I'm like, uh, I, I got to get a read on this dude because he hey, was babe. real close to my house. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get what you're doing. But no, yeah, yeah. I, it was. It, it's. I think honestly, it 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 would take away a lot of the stigma of of having to try or wanting to find a job for the status. Mm-hmm. If we stop putting so much pressure on, like, so what do you do for work? Yeah. yeah. What do you do for work? Yeah. Oh, see, I am this, this, that, and like, man, I don't, a lot of that does not matter to me. Dude, I just want to know yeah. the person I, that I'm standing I, I want somebody of. to come up and say, what kind of dreams do you have? Right. What oh, kind of goals are you chasing, right, man? Exactly. Anything crazy, anything out there? How can I help you with that? Right. You know, that's, and that's kind of what me and you've been doing, me, you and Brian, and now Omar with the podcast that we, we set yeah. these goals of, Nothing to do with career choices. We don't even talk about it. No. no. We're, we're going after personal growth and goals. And in the mix of what we always talk about, how can we better our relationship with our wife? How can we better understand mm-hmm. our children in the tough times? Like, that's why we've connected so well. And a lot of men out there don't have that person no. to connect with. Oh, man. That's you know? what you just what you just described, Spencer. Again, like goosebumps. Goosebumps. Because, yeah. like, <laughs> what you just described, I think, is is part of, like, what we wanted to discuss today Mm. as a potential solution to the identity crisis yeah. that people tie into right. their career. Right. Yeah. And that is, you got to step out of that mm. identity. It's part of your identity. It's part yeah. of your life. It's it a is. component of it, but it sure as hell is not an identity that you need that, that in my opinion, that you need to continue, no. you know, to, to proliferate people. I think people, you know, try to find a career and make that, that are that their identity because they really don't know who they are and oh, what they want to be. That couldn't be some of the truest you know, words spoken. It's right? the easiest, Seriously. easiest, easiest path to take is get on LinkedIn, indeed or whatever, find a job. And that gives you purpose because you truly don't know what you want. Right. Yeah. But in the mix of sitting around trying to figure it out, you feel like there's pressure on that as well. Yeah. And you, you can't figure out your life in a couple of days or a month. No, it, it's ever changing. Yeah. And I can I can speak from experience on that. I mean, I think the hardest thing that I have uh, it being somebody not somebody like you have who has triumphed over it, but somebody mm-hmm. who's very much living it, is I fight fear of rejection with my kids, my wife, mm-hmm. my friend group. I've had uh, you know I've experienced childhood trauma with rejection. Yeah, and so that's a very much a common theme in my life. And I didn't recognize before I lost my job just how much that fear of rejection right 
and, and my lack of values outside of my organization had been negatively impacting my life. Right. Mm. And it wasn't until like, I think it was a really God thing with me, man. Like mm. me meeting both of you, um, happened at just about the same time that right. You know, a couple months before mm. I'd lost my job mm. and, um, <clears throat> I was forced to like find an identity and begin to develop that identity outside of work. And in a lot of ways I had a head start, but I still had to do the hard work. And that is like, I have had to go through a grief cycle, a deep grief cycle. Look at it like this. Look at it like this. Things happen for a reason. Things that, I mean, I, I'm a strong believer that things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the times when we are faced with these adversities, as far as losing jobs, mm -hmm you know, and forcing us to find ourselves again is because we're losing ourselves in, in a place, in a space that we should not be. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Meaning that oh, if you, if you are, if you are so hell bent on drowning yourself in your career, essentially what you do, yeah. you drowning yourself in your career and you, you turn turn your back on your family. It's not intentional, but you do it because I'm like, I got to do this for my family, but you are literally removing yourself from your family. Mm -hmm. That's God telling you like, stop. I'm yeah. going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Dude, I'm, my mind's being blown right now. And now it's an opportunity for growth. And now it's, and, and remember like these, these scriptural tenants talking about we're men of adversity. We're built of adversity, mm -hmm. and these everything is a test. I, th I think we didn't give you had made a comment last episode about this is a test, mm -hmm. and I, I don't think we spent enough time really going down that road mm -hmm. of the mindset that I was able to shift into and continue mm -hmm. to really daily consciously stay into is whatever adversity I face. And today we're talking about adversity through job, mm -hmm. but yeah. you know, there's parental adversity, Relation friend, yeah. relationship, yeah, right. friendships, and and if we can put ourselves in the lens of this is a test and it's a test from the almighty, mm. I mean, it shifts the mindset, yeah. man, oh man, it, 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 it strikes that masculine heartstring, right? Yeah. Right. It's, but it, it should be eye opening for the other guys out there that do find themselves drowning themselves in their career to, to block out the other hardships of life. Right. right? Some people will dive deeper into it because they're like, I don't want to handle my kids today. So staying on the computer and doing a couple more emails is better off. Right. right? Yeah. So find something that's more purposeful than that of your life. That's really you and authentic, you know, and yeah. pursue that because you got to be naive if you don't think something could be stripped from you. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. Right. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I was that guy mm -hmm. I was naive and, uh, it was stripped, but honestly, like you're talking about the nothing happens out of coincidence and, mm -hmm. you know, these are tests from the almighty and things like that. You know, I still haven't been able to find gainful employment and I'm totally okay with that. Cause I do trust that the next day I only worry about today. Right. Right then, you know, the burdens of the future, regrets of the past. Right. But uh, I think the crazy, the crazy thing for me is like, man, I'm so grateful. Dude. It happened, man. Like mm -hmm. big, like big picture, man. Um, it, it, no, don't get me wrong. Now, the first step in all this is admitting I had a, an issue, mm -hmm. and the second step was being willing to take criticism and having a vulnerability to say, like, dude, something's got to give. Something's got to change, man. Right. Dude, but what a blessing to go through this hardship and realize that there is an opportunity for change and growth in your mindset of how to react and how to move forward in life and what's actually important. It's a wake up call. It is. Oh, that, yeah. Thank goodness it happened recently. Right. It yeah. sucks to go through it. Yeah. Right. But it is a blessing, man. Right. Yeah. Like what if it had happened, you know, 10 or 15 years from now and my kids had already experienced me as a dad through their entire childhood. Right. Mm -hmm. like, could you, could you imagine the damage to try to reconnect, you know, Ugh. it, you know, like what a tragedy. I, it, it is. It, yeah. I I try to connect with my kids on a a lot. You know, like I'm mm -hmm. I'm always present with them. Like Skylar likes telling me little jokes and stuff like that. And sometimes yeah. I laugh, sometimes I just won't laugh. She's like, why, <laughs> why aren't you laughing? Sorry, jokes? Jokes. It wasn't that funny. Right. I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be honest with you, baby. <laughs> All yeah. the jokes you tell aren't funny. So yeah. I'm just not I daddy's not I, laughing. I, I <laughs> still <laughs> love you though. Right. I still love you. Yeah. But you know, like I, the reason that I can speak from this this space right now is because I went through it, and I'm not going to name the financial company that I mm. used to work for because again, I don't. I, yeah, I don't good man. Yeah, yeah. There's no bad blood or anything. Like yeah. that. No, no. But, huh. You know, it was one of those things where I was working, you know, to to further myself, but it was more of a status thing. You know, like mm. the going from really man, it was going from like the bank section over to stock plan services. And so you're climbing that corporate ladder. I'm climbing that corporate ladder. 
but I noticed as I was moving up, my my depression was going up. My anxiety mm. was going up because wow. I didn't have time to myself. Like it was always work. Like when I would get off work, I thought about work. When I would go to work, I was thinking about work. Mm-hmm. When I went on vacation, I got called for work. You know, it was one of those things where I could not turn off. Yeah. And I'm like, what am I doing to myself? What am I? I'm literally, I'm working myself. I'm drowning myself in my work and I'm having anxiety attacks. You know, mm-hmm. Nat was trying to figure out what's wrong with me. She, you know, I'm pretty sure she thought I was crazy. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it was just, I was too entwined in trying to accomplish that status because when someone asked, where do you work? I work for this big financial yeah. company, you know. And I'm the big man in charge. Yeah. Right. But you were living a life that wasn't authentic to you. No. And your body was telling you that. Couldn't it's sleep. More than that, right? I it's couldn't sleep. Body, spirit. Mm-hmm. My, yeah, everything. Like, I would literally lay down to go to sleep. My body was like, no, we've not done anything all day. But my brain is like, we've thought about so many different things. We had to process so much stuff. Yeah, so that was mental labor over physical labor. Yeah. And sometimes that, dude, that's that's a lot more than, I'd rather get out and swing the hammer kind right. of for say. Exactly. You Actually, know? yeah. Exactly. In a lot of ways, yeah. yeah. So for you, I mean, you went through that, Omar, you went through that transition. Mm-hmm. It seems like successfully. Um, mm-hmm. It's allowed you to align your professional values with your personal ones and I would even argue, uh, to an extent, you've made those one. Right. Right. Does that make sense? There's it makes. Those... It does. You know. Yeah. I. I. I took. I jumped out on faith, and I did something that was extremely scary. It was a, an absolute career shift, and I. And I get it. I. You know. A lot of guys. How late in the game with, were you? How was it? Uh, how old were you at this time? I was actually forty. Oh, this is 43. Oh, so wow. it wasn't, that, you know, it wasn't a long ago. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I've only been doing what I've, I've, I've only been iron working now for like two years. Wow. And so Skylar was already born. Skylar was already born. Two yeah. or three, right? Yeah. How and, long were you in the financial industry? Uh, I was there a, a total of 12 years. Oh, wow. Oh, so yeah. that's, that's a, that's, that's a, a big huge. identity change right yeah. there. That's huge. So for you, when you thought about that, like you said, you mentioned fear, mm-hmm. you'd already, you'd already, you know, harped on the fact that there was, there was an identity there. And also there was some sort of, you know, cognitive bias with regards to how, how you felt you needed to feel mm-hmm. and how it was making you feel. Mm-hmm. So what eventually, what was the, what for you, what was the key, what was the key moment or theme here for allowing you to successfully transition and, you know, get over that inertial point? It was, it was like, it's almost like the old saying, you know, uh, what's the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over mm-hmm. and over again and expecting, expecting different results. Different result. And I, I kept doing that and, in the financial world, like I've learned a lot, mm-hmm. you know, working in that industry, you know, and, I, and I'd use a lot of that knowledge that I have, that I've gained, you know, oh, to yeah. this day. But it was one of those things where, like I said, it just didn't fit what my mind and body was telling me, mm-hmm. you know, I need it. I need physicality. I need to move. I need to be completely exhausted in order to have a peace of mind and a peace of body. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, did it scratch the masculine niche for you? It it's not even so much a masculine thing for me either. Oh, okay. You know, it's more, it was more, like I said, I needed to find something that, like I said, succinct my mind and body because they were literally out of whack. Mm. Oh. You know, like, like I said, when I say, when I tell you that I would lay down and I could not sleep because my body was like, we need to exert energy. Yeah. You know, and my mind is like, we've done a lot of stuff today. Yeah. They were just, they were fighting one another. Yeah. And it just caused me to like go into wild depression. I was having horrible, horrible anxiety, mm. you know, and, and it was time. It was just time for me to say, you know what? I need to do something different. Like I have to do something different. If not, then I don't know what the road would have. Yeah. yeah. That road would have so you took a, you took a chance and went and tried to experience the unknown at a late age in life. Right. And made a career change and everything like that. Right. It's amazing, dude. Yeah, it is. I mean, you. It successfully. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is impressive. So, you know, I think, I think Omar's testimony is, um, you know, indicative of, of the fact that like it is possible and very precisely at mm-hmm. any age. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, late in the game for you, buddy. I mean, that's, that's pretty rad. You, so. you have, I, I, it's important. You have to, you know, we can't, we can't live the life that our parents lived. It's, it's a different mm. day and age where, you know, it's like the old, the old saying is that you, you work a job when, when they would get out of high school, they would go through their job. Or if they didn't go to college, they would the lifers, right? Yeah. Lifers that, you know, and it's like, be it through hell, high water, you know, like if the job was just killing you, you stayed there because you bootstrap it, man. Right. 
You think that, society puts pressure on that? Absolutely. Yeah. For someone to be like, dude, why you always, every time I talk to you, you got a different career, you know, is I, I see that as growth and opportunity Absolutely. and experience. Really, I, I think that's a generational gap. I think, mm-hmm. you know, um, you're Gen X, mm-hmm. right? Gen we're, Gen, we're Gen Z's. I'm a baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just I, I, I My think, little baby. Uh, little baby. <laughs> I think yeah, I mean I think I think Gen Xers introduced the concept of, of job hopping mm-hmm. and we don't want to go down that rabbit hole too much. Yeah. But, right. But the, the point is I think I think Gen like Gen Xers introduced it, Gen Zers mastered it. Mm. And I think I think there still is a generational gap, especially with you know, when you look at the professional field that, that most executive level positions right now are being held by uh, very young boomers. It's being mm. transi- transitioned into Xers and millennials. Right. And so you see that there's a cultural shift taking place, but there still very much is wholesale judgment related to not holding a job for very long, very long being like less than three years. Mm-hmm. But uh, outside of that rabbit hole, I wanted to ask you, I mean, you, you've heard my testimony about mm-hmm. being somebody who's really living that transition of values between, you know, being an executive and mm. really figuring out what my true identity is. Yeah. Omar, who's triumphed over that executive position into a position that allows him to connect mind and body. Now, Spencer, you're an entrepreneur. Yes. And you have built, you know, you have built your professional, your, your, your business and your professional identity from the ground up. Mm-hmm. So it'd be interesting to hear your perspective of whether or not you have the same struggles or have had the same struggles. And if you've had them, what have you had to do to overcome them? Yeah, I mean, I I think I've I've done the the corporate America thing, worked in a high rise, um, and kind of like Omar, great financials, but I find myself every day just questioning what I'm doing with my right. life. It wasn't enough, right? Yeah. Um. So, looking back, <clears throat> I realized too, my kids are growing old. I'm I'm gone all the time. Um. Most of the time in a car, just fighting traffic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And that's that's, a real that's one of the most depressing things to me was driving in a box to go sit in a box to drive home in another box, box to go right. sit in a box to watch a box. Right. right. A lot of boxes. So right. step outside that box and say, you know, I'm still young. It's time to take a chance in life. I, I know what I, what I know I felt like is enough and I'm going to learn as I go and just trust that process and, and really do something for myself to give me the freedom to spend more time with my kids and my wife. Like what I truly value in life is that. So, so is it safe to say for you that instead of having your job make you who you are and how it makes you, mm-hmm. you have defined it as being something that allows you to do the things that are most important to you? Exactly. I'm using right. it to provide for my family so I can be authentically who I am and who I want to be with my life. So it gives me the time to to serve other people, to be there for my children, to be a part of the community, um, you know, and just different experiences, man. It's, yeah. it's, it took me down some tough paths, but once again, it was the, the struggles that, that came with the most growth. So let me ask you this, you know, and, and this is for, and, and by no means do I, you know, do I want, or do we want to say that, you know, the answer is to the job hop. If you are in a mm. career that you absolutely love and you, yeah. you, you do find yourself, you know, like you don't want to move, you don't want to leave, but you do find yourself drowning mm. in your work. What do you do? to separate yourself from work and still have that quality time at home with family and kids. You put priorities first, first you set schedules, you know? Um, and kind of like you're talking about lifers, man. I, I talked to someone last week, I'm not going to say their name who, who just got a pay raise on their position. They've been waiting for it for a long time. And it was like a dollar an hour. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. 40, 40 bucks extra a week. I'm like, hey man, it's time to look for something else. I'm like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't think I, I don't, I don't know what else is out there. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Every second that goes by, your life is fading away. You're right. not dying tomorrow. You're dying right as we speak. Yes. Right, right. And you, don't be afraid to take a chance. Put your head in another door and see what's out there. I think the other thing too is I don't. I, I think don't be afraid is a good message. But I think the part of this podcast is it's okay to be afraid. Mm-hmm. But but in order for us to get over that, we've got to understand that this is hard. Yeah. Right. Like it, it, I'm, what I guess what I'm trying to say is what I'm ex- talking about from like <laughs> yeah. the actual experience like, yeah. is like, you, there's no way to avoid the tough stuff. No. Like the, the best way around at this position mm-hmm. is through it. Yeah. Do you, the, you ever heard the story of like cows and Buffalo, right? A storm comes cows. Yeah. They go to the opposite corner mm-hmm. of the, the field and wait for the storm and they last through it. Buffalo. Go right at it. Go right at it, baby. They get through it faster. Mm-hmm. Fear not, is not your future. It's, yeah. Fear is opportunity. Right. Yeah. I mean, golly, 
I, just, I think if we can challenge the, both the youngsters, you know, mm. of generations that watch the show both now and into the future, I mean, I, I really, I, there's a lot of things that we're pulling from this mm. particular show, which is like the theme of defining your values, yeah. facing fear and going through it. It's okay to be scared. Yes. There, there's, there's places to go to get through that. There's therapy, there's community, there's friends, there's right. new creative outlets. And we must, as men, explore those if we are to break the cycle of identity in what we do. Right. Is that, is that fair? Yeah. 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 And, I mean, growing up, you know, wouldn't you tell your kids you're capable of being anything you ever want to be? Where did we lose that? Because even at your age, at 40 years old, you're like, I can change this. I can do this. I mean, you hear it all the time, Oprah Winfrey, whatever, she didn't become rich until late 30s. Right, early 40s. You yeah. know, Colonel Sanders didn't start KFC until he was like 35, dude. <laughs> right. I mean, like... He didn't hit it big till he was in his 40s, too. Yeah, or something crazy. Like, what about it's, the, what it's about, never too late. I, yeah. I think at that, in those, in those pivotal moments in our mm-hmm. lives, we're trying to find out who we are. We're trying to find ourselves, which is okay. You know, you, you yeah. go through, and, and the funny thing of it is, is that when you're younger, you, you're a little less fearful to try different things, you know? And, and I'll, I'll use examples. Like we used to, we used to like tie sheets to the back of our, our neck or around our neck and jump off the trampoline. Oh yeah. Pretend oh. to be Superman. Right? Well, they, they, there's a saying that says you need to live life like a three year old wearing a Batman suit. Right. Dude. You know, they'll see, they'll see a gas. And like, dude, I I'm see a... adults wear that though. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to stay away from that. Dude. This dude yeah. is in the cosplay. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but no, no. Yeah. Like, you know, kids, kids will see a gap and they were like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to jump this gap. Mm-hmm. I'm jumping this gap. But as you get older, you're like, man, if I, if I miss, I'm falling. And then you get older, it's like, man, I'm, if I miss, I'm dying. Mm-hmm. And as, so it's, it's like, as we get older, we, we start getting complacent. And I, and I noticed that in myself and I, and I, it annoys me. I'm not going to lie. It annoys me once I feel myself becoming complacent. And I'm like, I cannot be complacent because, you know, like, there's a lot of opportunities that I'll miss out because I'm fearful of doing these so, things. So the other men are out there listening to this. At what point do we tell them it's time to make a change? Do are, are you should you always be exploring that opportunity? Um, if you're feeling, if I mean, you could, you should typically you should be able to feel it inside your soul, kind of like I think it's like what I'm thing. doing is is not right. It's not my true purpose, identity, what I'm capable of. I, I would say feeling that. Yeah, I would say if you start questioning why you're doing what you're doing, mm. I think it's time to start making making the range with to try to find mm-hmm. something because mm-hmm. if you have to question why am I doing this right now? If you wake up in the morning and you're like what am I doing? Why am I doing this? What the only reason I'm doing this is to to pay my bills. Right. Just, or I, I hate that because right. that's not what life is, I promise you. Or right. I'm holding on to this because, you know, I have you know, and, and I'll put this out here. I stepped down as a foreman mm. at my work. Yeah. Uh, and the reason that I stepped down is because um, the, the, I started to question. Now, I still love what I do. I still, I mm. love welding. I'll, I'll burn myself on a day-to-day basis and, and not think about it. Like yeah. I love, it's, it's almost sadistic. <laughs> yeah. Like I, it kind of gives me a little bit of a shot of adrenaline, mm. but um you know, like I stepped down because it it started to get to a point to where, you know, they put more emphasis on my status mm. than they were me as an individual. Mm. You know, I I like to be able to come home and actually chill out. You start stressing me out about a lot of stuff. I need to step away because I'm start questioning what why am I doing this? Yeah. yeah. It becomes going, unhealthy for you. Yeah. And that's not good. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um what we'd like to do is, is wrap up. I think what we can do as a collective here real quick is maybe define a couple things. Mm. Maybe if there's any youngsters, men, anybody, I mean, anybody who's really struggling with maybe this identity crisis, mm. I think it starts with defining your values, yeah. both professional and personal, making mm. sure that those may be aligned. I think the second thing is recognizing and accepting that you may have an identity issue. Mm-hmm. The third thing is recognizing and accepting the fear and the difficulty that's going to come with whatever decision you're about to make. Yeah. And then the fourth thing I think is recognizing that there is a community of people outside of your working establishment who are actually here to support you. And there Absolutely. are professional outlets too Absolutely. that mm-hmm. you can seek to help you work through that. But whatever endeavor you're about to go down is going to be hard. Yeah. 
Is that a, is that a fair statement? And em- embrace the suck, right? Yeah. Man, uh, that's a great way to end this. Yeah. Is to say, like, man, as men, mm-hmm. like, let's start being men. Right. Embrace yeah. the suck, bro. Yeah. It's going to be well worth it on the other end. It, I can speak from experience. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but, man, I've grown so freaking Dude, much. Right. Yes. Every hardship has grown something from it. Right. We wear these these wounds with, with honor and pride. Absolutely. Man, I'm so glad. Like again, I say this every episode, but I freaking mean it, man. I'm so glad we're doing this together. Same this, here, brother. Yeah, this is a part of the process. It's so yeah. fun, man. Seriously. Yeah. With that being said, I think we're gonna wrap up. We appreciate yeah. you guys just joining us. And we got some merch coming out. Oh soon. yeah. So you guys, you know, check it out. Support. We'll be passing it out around the community too. Just yeah. If you're wearing it, let people know that you're one of those people that people can lean on. In right. times of hardship. Right. Absolutely. And they, uh, the website's uh, dropping early next week along with the merchandise. So we appreciate you guys just checking it out and yeah. uh, showing your support. We really appreciate it. That's Absolutely. Good. That being said, uh, Dude Let's Talk. Visit our website at dudeletstalkpodcast.com and let us know what topics you want us to cover. Check out our merch line and follow us on YouTube, TikTok, and Insta. Dude Let's Talk. Real fine.